Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Today I will be trying to solve questions from Databricks Certified Data Engineer Associate exam. The questions will be very similar to what you can expect in the original question. However, they may or may not be the exact same questions. So let's proceed with the test. Starting with the first question, a chief data officer is concerned about inconsistencies in reports generated by data analysis and data engineer team. The CDO believes that current soiled architecture between the teams is primary cause. How could implementing a data lake house architecture specifically address this concern? Both teams should automatically scale their workload. No, this is not at all correlated to the problem. Both teams would utilize the same single source of truth for analysis and data processing. Yeah, this could be one solution. I don't think this should have been highlighted. This is kind of navigating me to think that this is the right solution. Not much of an issue. Both team would be reorganized to report the same department within the organization. No, both teams would be able to collaborate in projects in real time. No, these are not actually correlated to the question over here. So this is the most probable answer. A data engineer is deciding between using Databricks notebook versioning and Databricks repos for collaborative project. Which of the following features is a significant advantage offered by Databricks repos that is not available in Databricks notebook versioning? Databricks repos automatically saves progress during notebook development. So that's like a very uh, simple feature. Databricks repos support the use of multiple branches for development. Yeah, this is a significant advantage for sure. Databricks repos allows users to revert to previous version of the book. This is good, both but both repos and network pro supports versioning. So this should not be the correct answer. Databricks repos provide the ability to add comments again. This is possible with Git integration. The native Databricks repos does not provide a commenting feature. Databricks repos is wholly housed within the Databricks lake house. Both are wholly housed. So I will be going with option number two. So we need to insert some values into rows and which of the following SQL statement correctly appends new records to my table. So it is about inserting, right? Instead of updating, it is about inserting. So one of these has to be the solution. And it's very common, even in MySQL, PostgreSQL, in other databases, you will see that this is the format which is being used. Insert into table name values, and then we pass the values which are to be inserted. So option A should be the correct one. A data engineer observes that a Delta Lake table contains excessive number of small files which negatively impacting the query performance to consolidate these small files into larger more manageable files which delta lake operations should we use or should they use vacuum is used to remove files that are no longer referenced by the delta table so it is not the correct answer for sure then compaction Compaction is a general term for combining small files. Uh, it is not a specific keyword used in Databricks. Repartition. It is kind of the change of partitioning of data frame or delta lake, delta table. But it is not primarily intended for compacting small files into one larger file. So optimize. This is the best option over here. A data engineer is tasked with creating a reusable data entity from existing tables the entity must be accessible by other data engineers in different sessions and persistently stored for future use which type of data entity best satisfies this requirement table is the obvious option over here function is reusable piece of code we use a virtual table based on a query so in BigQuery, google bigquery also you must must have seen that you run a query and then you save it as a view it is a stored query, not the data itself. Then temporary view, it is kind of exist only for the duration session in which it was created. It is not a persistent table. So table is the best option because persistent is the keyword here. 
moving on to the next question a data engineer runs a statement every day to copy the previous data previous day is sales data into transaction table each day sales data is stored in its own file within the transaction slash raw location today the data engineer executes the following commands to perform this task copy into transactions table from this path file format equals packet after running the command the data engineer observes that the number of records in the transaction table remains unchanged what is the most likely reason why the statement did not copy any records into a table the file format was not successfully specified using the format option no no it, it's already specified so while specifying the file format can be important the copy into command might still work with the default format settings so this does not sound the, like the right option the transaction table needs to explicitly refer, refreshed to reflect the copy rows copy into statement should automatically reflect the changes refreshing the table isn't necessary however i have faced sometimes that refreshing helps but that's not necessary thing the previous day's data file has already been copied to the transaction table this is likely solution because copy into what it can do is can detect previously copied files and prevent deduplication uh, sorry duplication so this is the most probable answer when writing into a data table which command is most suitable for preventing the introduction of duplicate records merge merge definitely can allow us to update an existing table based on a source table it can be configured to avoid writing duplicate records based on specified conditioning anyways the other options are very obvious drop insert and append so we can just eliminate and choose the correct one a data analyst team uses delta table name sales the data engineering team who primarily use python which primarily use python needs to access the table in pyspark for data quality test which of the following commands is correct way for the data engineering team to access sales table from pyspark in pyspark okay i think this one is the correct option for sure so spark table and then we specify the table name so a data engineer executes the following sql command in databricks environment create database if not exists customer 360 where will be the customers 360 database be physically located by default yeah this one should be the correct option why not the first one because the default location does not includes the database at this particular keyword so it is not the correct option this path is generally created under warehouse direct directory so this is also incorrect this one is the parent directory and not the location of the created database itself so option b sounds like the best option a data engineer attempts to drop a spark table named my table using the following command after running this command the engineer observes that both the data files and metadata associated with the table are deleted from the file system which one is the most likely reason for this behavior but the table was managed this sounds like a good option because when a table is dropped spark sql removes both the metadata and underlying data files from the file system it's kind of like cascade delete this could be a good option the table data was smaller than 10 gb this is kind of very bad option itself size of the data is not a determining factor table did not have a location specified no that's not the case the table was external when an external table is dropped only the metadata is removed from the meta store the data files themselves are not deleted so option a should be the correct option a data engineer needs to create a table in databricks using data from csv file located at path to csv they run the following sql command to achieve the sql uh, okay create table my table which of the following code snippets correctly comp 
completes a task by filling in the placeholder. Okay, what's the placeholder? Create table, new table. Yeah, since the data uh, is coming from CSV, we can directly say using CSV. This clause specified that the data source is a CSV file and the part to file is provided in options clause. So yeah, this should be the correct one, option B. What is the key advantage of using packet files over CSV files? When creating an external table using a create table as select statement in a data warehouse. While packet supports partitioning, this is not the primary advantage in the context. Packet files are automatically converted into delta tables upon creation. No, they are not automatically converted to delta tables. Delta tables are separate format. Paraquet files possess a well-defined schema enhancing the data integrity and query performance. Yes, this is definitely one of the use case for sure. Paraquet files are inherently optimized for write operations. While Paraquet offers optimizations, the well-defined schema is the biggest advantage. So I think option D is also good. But if I have to choose between these two, since it is a single option, correct? So I would like to go with option C. Data engineer has left the organization and the DataBricks Delta tables need to be transformed into new lead data engineer to a new lead data engineer. Original engineer no longer access DataBricks workspace, uh, which of following individuals is best suited to transfer ownership of these Delta tables using data explorer workspace administrator workspace administrators have broad permissions within a databricks workspace including the ability to manage and transfer ownership of resources like delta tables so this sounds like the best option over here other options are definitely they are not that good someone new the old one no which SQL keyword is specifically designed to transform data from a long format to wide format? Transform. The transform keyword is not a standard SQL keyword for pivoting data. So not this one. Sum, sum is used for aggregating data and calculating sums, not for reshaping. Convert. Convert is used for data type conversion, not for reshaping. Pivot is for reshaping. You might have used pivot tables. It is very common. A data engineer has a Python variable table name that holds the name of the table. They want to use this variable in a SQL query executed via Spark. Which of the following code snippet completes the task of running the query using table name? I think that Spark SQL is the correct method to execute SQL query using Spark. Uh, and we can specify the table name inside of a F string. Had there been no F string, we could probably use dot format. But yeah, but since F string is already there, so we can simply use Spark dot SQL. Data engineer is working with two tables. Each of the table is displayed in its entirety. There is a sales table and favorite stores table. So the data engineer runs the following query to join these two tables. Select sales favorite from sales left join on sales.customerid favorite.customerid. What will be the result of this query? Mm, I feel like some data is missing. What is result A? What is result B? Yeah, to me, it looks like some data is missing in this particular question. So I'm going to skip this particular question. A data engineer needs to apply custom logic to identify employees with more than five years of experience in the array column employees in table stores. The custom logic should be created, uh, should create a new column experience underscore employees that is an array of all the employees with five years of experience or more to apply this custom logic at scale the data engineer wants to use the filter high order function which of the following code blocks successfully completes the task okay 
ignore the sequel and uh, at the very start i think it's a platform issue we should be displaying this query as a sequel and that's why we are uh, we are annotating this sequel word but ignore it this sounds like a plausible option the sql code correctly uses the filter function to iterate over employees array and select only those which are having more than five years of experience so i'm going to i'm going with this one only a data engineer who is new to python needs to create a python function that adds two integers together and returns the sum okay again ignore this python word we need to add and return yeah this should be this one because we are we have to return otherwise this function won't return anything and we will be expecting something to be returned but it will actually return none so option d should be the correct one a data engineer is configuring structured streaming job to ingest data from source table process it using transformations and then write the result to destination table the engineer wants the streaming query to execute micro batches at a fixed interval of five seconds examine the following code snippet which of the following trigger configurations should engineer use to achieve the desired micro batch processing interval of five seconds processing time equals five seconds this should be the correct one a data engineer is responsible for maintaining data pipeline recently they have observed that a decline in the quality of incoming source data to address this the data engineer wants to implement an automated solution for monitoring data quality which of the following tools would be most suitable for this task let's examine each of the option auto loader auto loader is increment uh, auto loader incrementally and efficiently processes new data files as they arrive in cloud storage while it is very useful for ingestion it does not inherently provide mechanism for automated data quality monitoring so i will be ignoring this one for now but let's keep it in an keep it in queue then unity catalog it provides centralized data government governance security and discovery across databricks but it is not directly related to automating data quality monitoring delta lake delta lake is storage layer that provides ac property the ac transaction schema enforcement and other features of data lakes while it supports data quality through schema enforcement it does not offer automated monitoring that's the keyword that i am fo focusing on then delta live tables it is more of a framework for building reliable maintainable and testable data processing pipelines it allows data engineers to define expectations on data quality and automatically monitor those expectations so this sounds like the best option over here now i am not going to solve all of those all of these questions there are quite i think around 45 questions so i will be leaving rest of the questions up to you once you complete the questions you will find exact score and what are the topics you need to prepare what are the topics we are weak at so those kind of things you can uh, expect from here once you open up the questions you will find detailed explanation of each and every option over here why a particular option is correct why it is incorrect and finally a detailed overall explanation of the correct option the incorrect option everything leaving the rest up to you bye